It is the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, and our next guest has made her way home in probably the longest route and journey possible. But uh, from originally Angle Vale, spent a bit of time at the North Adelaide Football Club and the SANFLW there before getting drafted and taken by GWS, then off to the Gold Coast, and now back home at the Port Adelaide Football Club in its inaugural AFLW season. Brittany Perry joins me on the line. Brittany, welcome to the show. How are you going? Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm going really well. Going really Thank you. Excellent. It's great to have you on. Um, let's talk about your football journey. Um, you're only 28 years old. And you're a baby in my books as far as I'm concerned. And <laughs> you've played at a number of footy clubs. When did you decide, can you remember back to when you first started kicking a footy around, when did you decide that footy was something you are going to have a real crack at? Um, I managed to play a season of footy when I was in the body back in, I think I was about six years old, um, before I sort of decided to pursue other sporting um, it, like dreams, I guess, because we couldn't keep playing footy past the age of 12, I think. So I yeah. ended up deciding to play cricket and basketball. And, and I played cricket for a long time and managed to play in a state level for that. Um, and then in 2019, that sort of was coming to an end. Um, and I thought I'd played footy the whole time just to, just for fun. And I thought, bugger it, I might as well have a crack and put my name in the ring and see if anyone was interested. And I got really lucky and managed to get out to GWS. Um, that first year that I put my name down. So, well, well I mean, were, you were I actually anything... put my name down a few times. But... <laughs> well, you were anything but a rank amateur by then. At that point, you were uh, running around at the North Adelaide Football Club in the very early days, I guess, the, the early-ish days of the SANFLW uh, before we had the full quota of teams. And uh, like many, a northern suburb girl at that point, you, you wound up playing for, for North Adelaide, which, what was that like? Yeah, I um, really, really enjoyed my time at North Adelaide. It was, um, yeah, a really great club and I learned a lot. Um, um, verse three, uh, Matt Slade, and then further through Chrissy Steen. So um, I had some really great coaching, and obviously heaps of great teammates. So yeah, I really enjoyed my time there. The club, the club was so good to us. So. And before that, you were playing a bit of footy at uh, Anglevale, I believe, there in the Adelaide Plains League in the the very uh, infancy of that uh, women's competition as well. Was that right? Yeah, yeah, I love my time at Anglevale. Um, have lots of really close friends from there, so I always return whenever I come back to Adelaide. So uh, this will be no different. I'll find my way out there and do it be as a runner or up out at training or whatever I can. Well, and thankfully now the Northern Connect is finished, so it's a bit quicker than it used to be from Port Adelaide down to, to Anglevale, right? Yeah, much faster. I actually I still live in Gawler now, so I've just recently, very recently moved back, so um, I'm very glad that the Northern Connect is finished and I can just jump on that to training. Fantastic. Now, um, last night or uh, we, we saw some incredible vision of uh, Port Adelaide having its first training run. Now, what was that like to run out the race on Albert and a famous ground in Itself, famous footballing ground, and then run out and the support. You had the men's team line up in a guard of honour. There was hundreds of people, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Uh, but we might have even been into the uh, the figure mark of people there at Albert and uh, cheering you girls on for your first training session. That must have been something. It was so amazing. Like I don't know if I've ever really felt anything like that before. I honestly couldn't wipe the smile off my face. I, I was just in awe looking around at all the people that were there cheering us on and supporting us. Like uh, I'm just so grateful to be able to have this opportunity to come home and play footy in front of friends and family and passionate supporters. So, yeah, it, last night was something else. So uh, at the end of, I think it was the 2019 a, uh, AFLW season, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, please do. Um, GWS, you'd played four games that year and GWS delisted you and then the Gold Coast Suns came knocking and gave you an opportunity for 2020 uh, and beyond. Uh, your time at the Gold Coast Suns, you would have made some wonderful friends there, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. I've... Um... Um, definitely, definitely enjoy my time at the Sun uh, and at the GWS, to, to be honest. Um, uh, my time's been really great across a lot of number of places, but I think uh, I think Port Adelaide might be the best one yet. So um, <laughs> I've obviously met a lot of people over my time and, and there's been a lot of friends and a lot of friendships that I'll that I'll hang on to forever. Um, and obviously, being able to live in, in other states and stuff has really uh, increased every, my knowledge about everything and uh, being given me a lot of opportunities I didn't know that I would be able to get. So I've, I've been really um, really fortunate to be able to have these opportunities. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've brought a few friends with me from the from the Suns down to Fort, so I'm pretty stoked about that too. Well, that's it. Yeah, you've got to you've got to know someone. But um, look, I'm sure Erin Phillips has got around the new group that uh, she's helped put together. Um, what what you be uh, initial um, thoughts on Erin Phillips first of all as a, as a person and as a leader uh, from everything that I've seen from afar um, she appears to be outstanding 
outstanding. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we haven't had a great deal of time together. We've only still had a dinner and a, and a training session now. So, but my initial thoughts, um, she's just such a really straight up person, really down to earth. So, um, yeah, I really look forward to sort of getting to know her more and getting to know the rest of the girls. Um, her as a leader, she almost had us all in tears the other night with her sort of just telling us her the, sort of the, what Port Adelaide means to her and sort of going talking to us about how what she wants us to get out of being a Port Adelaide player as well. So, yeah, we were, that was just before training, just before we ran out. So we are all pretty passionate after that. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, Port Adelaide's in her blood. Um, and now that uh, the, the AFLW opportunity exists, I think every um, self-respecting Adelaide Crows supporter knew that when the time come, Erin uh, was going to be back to where her roots uh, took her. But I'm interested to know what it's like. You haven't played a game in anger yet. You've had one training session. But um, have the Crows been mentioned around the group? And is there that rival? Rivalry that we see between the uh, the men's team, um, uh, the men's teams when they go at it. Are we going to see something similar in, in AFLW? Do you think? I think it's definitely an unwritten rule that there is always a rivalry with crosstown rivals. So I think, um, and obviously, growing up um, in South Australia, I know how passionate both Crows and Port supporters are, and the passion just pushes on to all the players so we will absolutely uh, give it our all when we play against the Crows and it'll definitely be a wonderful showdown. I'm seriously looking forward to being able to say that I've played in a showdown so that's uh, definitely something to look forward to. It's exciting um, but yeah, definitely. It? Yeah. yeah I think also I mean the girls obviously know a few of the Crows players across the road so we'll be uh, we'll be white line fever but I think there'll be a fair bit of love around afterwards. So. I think there'll be a bit of banter between the two groups as well obviously a few Crows this have made great. the journey down down to Alberton, so uh, I'm sure there'll be a few that'll uh, get in the middle of that. But um, one thing is, it's going to be great for South Australian women's footy. First of all, uh, we're seeing a genuine pathway develop in South Australia now with women's competitions all over the state. Uh, Brossa Light and Gawler, in particular, is uh, a, a competition which is being run basically prime time for football now. Uh, it's going alongside the men's competition being played on Sundays. Do you keep a close eye on what's happening close to home? You said you're out that way at Gawler. Uh, have you been keeping an eye on that? competition at all to see what sort of talent's around? Yeah, obviously um, it's, uh, it's harder to watch it from afar because it's not uh, not necessarily live stream, but I've definitely been keeping an eye on the stats and I have quite a number of people who I know and friends that are playing in those leagues, so um, I definitely keep an eye around on, on the scores and um, yeah, I'll definitely be getting out to a few of the games and having a look around and uh, see who's up and coming and encourage a few girls to, to join hopefully. Yeah, uh, the women's games come a long way uh, in a short period of time, and there's a lot of critics of it out there. Um, have you got a message? And, and I guess you'd probably try and block it out as much as you can. But um, for, for mine, as someone who's watched the women's game in particular very closely at grassroots level, at places like Barossa, Light and Gawler, and whatnot, I, I see the women's game improving every season. Um, I know you've you've been in the thick of it at the elite level, but have you got a message for any of the critics out there about what they might need to take into account when it comes to the women's game, and where do you see it? Uh, perhaps going in the future yeah absolutely I mean my first message would be that um, I mean all of us have full time jobs and this footy is basically our part time job so we can't survive off the amount of money even though we did have a great pay increase that that's still not um, enough money for, for us to be able to pay our rent and bills and, and be able to be a full time footballer for the most, for the majority of us um, so yeah so we're like I'm, I'm a school teacher I've been at work all week and um, and now I'm going to training now so um, basically I'm doing that five five times a week if not six so um, it is it is very hard for us to be able to catch up at the speed of knots that the that critics kind of want us to be able to catch up to the men um, but at the same time keep an open mind we we're working our butts off and um, the the skills and and the ability to play football and, and knowledge and stuff is coming from those juniors that, that started 10 years ago when we started really pushing women's footy or seven years ago. Um, they're starting to come through now and the next lot of teenagers that come through this year and next year, they're going to be players who've been able to hold a footy in their hands and kick footy since they were three or four rather than, or oh, sorry, probably 10, but <laughs> rather than those who picked it up when they're 25. So the next lot of teenagers is going to absolutely boost the, the league. And, and I think that, um, I mean, we're taking major steps every year and, and adding their last four teams, step obviously. And uh, I think we're definitely, for anyone who's going to be a critic, like I'm not going to listen, but um, 
I appreciate that you've got a different understanding to me, but I'm always going to push and encourage girls to join sports, no matter what sport it is. Stuff. That's a really good word. Look, to finish off with, Brittany, I've got to ask you this. Which fixture will you circle on the calendar more when the fixture is released? Will it be the Crows game? Will it be the Gold Coast Suns game? Or will it be GWS? Which one gets the uh, uh, the red circle? Well, I'll tell you what, being a South Australian, you can't go past the Crows game. Uh, but playing AFLW, I reckon there'll be a very close second to that to that Gold Coast team. I can't wait to get out in the field and, and beat them. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that too. Look, we wish you well for the season ahead and thanks for spending some time with us today. We appreciate you um, uh, spending a bit of time just before training and good luck on the journey this year. Uh, play well and uh, we look forward to catching up with you in the future. Thanks so much for that. Yeah, cheers. I look forward to it.